Dobrý den, dámy a pánové. Vítáme vás všechny. Víte, že v Praze byla jednou chodný práce pro zahraniční herce? No bylo. A já a několik kamarádů se tam každou stálo žít a pracovat. Ale promiň, neumíš český, že jo? Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, I was speaking Czech there for a moment. <laughs> Why was I speaking Czech? How do I even know how to speak Czech? Those are good questions. Well, it's probably because I lived there for quite a few years in the noughties. Maybe too many years, actually. The whole of the noughties. Why am I telling you this? Well, because in those days, a foreign actor, particularly English-speaking, could get a lot of acting work as what are called local hires in the biz. And in fact, myself and many of my friends who had acting backgrounds and talent were lucky enough to live and work there as actors. This episode of the Offstage Acting Podcast, we're going to talk to one of those friends of mine who started in Ohio, went to Prague, and then took everything he learned and all his experience and knowledge and took it all the way to Hollywood, California. His name is James Babson. He's got a load of talent and a wealth of experience. He's absolutely, literally one of my favorite people in the whole world. And so without further ado, Zdje je episoda osum. Rozhovor s Jamesem Babsonem. Prosím, uživejte si. Three, two, one. Boom! All right. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you. My name's Todd Kramer. This is the Offstage Acting Podcast Special Edition episode today. We got a special guest. You're going to love him. And I want to thank you for tuning in to the Offstage Acting Podcast, your Everything Acting Podcast. It's fun to get the timing of those things. Um, just like a real radio de-jock. Uh, how's everybody doing today? Thanks for checking back in with us. Jay is not with us today. You might have noticed a little dead air, a little dead space. And um, the reason for that is I fired him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, as, as all working actors do, we sometimes, um, from time to time, it has been known that we get a gig and, uh, Jay has gotten a gig today. And so, um, he unfortunately isn't with us, but that's okay because I tell you what, I've got a special treat for everyone. Um, I have got a good friend of mine who has... Oh, been an actor for a long time, and he has done a lot of work. I met him initially in Prague. I'll give you a little backstory. I went to Prague years ago, um, which is a story in and of itself. And I went there when I kind of was turning my back on acting, in essence. And... uh I wasn't sure I even wanted to still do it, but I just knew that L.A. was not going to be my scene, at least for a while. And um, I found myself in Prague, and all of a sudden, very quickly, I realized that there actually is quite a, a little scene there, a lot of theater. Czechs are very big on theater. Prague is in the Czech Republic, by the way. Um, and they had a huge theater scene, and there was actually a lot of kind of expats doing theater. And more importantly, there was a big... Um, Studio, I've mentioned it before, Berendorf Studios, which is a big European, Central European studio. Even a little bit more backstory, Czech Republic at the time in uh, had the largest film industry in the 19, early 1900s, um, had the largest film industry in Europe outside of Hollywood. Um, and we're producing lots of um, films for the European market, essentially German and, and Slavic, uh, Czechoslovakia that, those days. Um, and that studio still stood. And even during communism, the studio withstood all of communism and they produced a lot of content there over those years. So when I got there in 20, 2000, 2000, um, communism had just, the wall had fallen, not but 10 years prior. And a lot of productions were coming to Prague to shoot. Uh, I think the um, prior, earlier, I think I talked to Jay about this. There had been, um, Amadeus was shot there. That was even during communism. And then the first one was Mission Impossible film. But after that, there was tons going on. So 
um, you're going to hear from my guest today and myself, because this is a friend who was an actor and very similarly to myself left um, sort of the United States and came to Europe to, I don't know, well, we'll find out because I'm not actually even sure um, myself, but um, found himself doing a lot of work in the European market, which I think was already surprising. Um, meaning work like television, commercials, films, not just for America, but for ev all, all kinds of markets, but even for America. Uh, we did uh, a lot of work there and we're going to talk about those things. Um, and it was kind of a good time and, and a great way to build up, you know, your CV and, and get a lot uh, of experience, uh, which is what an actor really needs on camera experience, opportunities. Um, and I think the opportunities were there at that time were, were vast and many, uh, for both he and I. So you're going to hear a lot of references to that. Um, he's a great guy. I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to go to his, uh, well, let's, I'll, I'll let it speak for itself. This is James Babson and his what we like to call in the business showreel. The showreel of James Babson. How you feeling? Pretty good. Good. Pretty good. Um, I've actually been thinking a lot about something you said the first meeting. Right? I don't know how, what the protocol. <laughs> Man, I'm, doing, I feel like you're I'm you're doing great, dude. You're doing great. Okay. Uh, would you be my sponsor? <laughs> Yes. Really? It's that easy. Mm. So Louise Mendar is right over there, officers. Oh, Alcoholic. please don't call us that. Brooklyn right. Nine Nine. Yeah, we're pretending we like old people and don't think they're gross. Some of us aren't pretending. I think the elderly are treasures to society. Actually, from experience, she's more right. You definitely shouldn't be working here. Ooh. Shotgun. Where's Grill? Shotgun in a Grill. belly. My cat was low because you didn't pay me. Now you owe me a life. Tough guy. Left you three out there. Here's the one you want. Don't forget that. He's got to come off sometime, right? He strung you up for me? That's twisted. I'm in a million connections around here. Wait, you're a writer? Yeah. And I got all my stuff in the different agents around Bradley here. Cooper. I'm actually glad it's taken me a while to break through. It's giving me a chance to develop my style, you know? Understand the market. <laughs> so what kind of stuff do you write? Uh, angry young man, I guess. <laughs> I used to be like that. Now I write sci-fi. <laughs> 123 counts of mail fraud in one night. How does that I know, work? I know. Okay, so there's, there's a delivery truck, okay? It's like Christmas. And you see all these packages, and they're going to different places, like Dubai and Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. Where, Machu Picchu. Where is, no. And what universe is it Machu Picchu? Is it it's in Slovenia? Canada. Canada. And people what? hike there. It's like I thought a, it was in South America and Peru. It's in Canada. It's called Machu Picchu. Look what we made. Jerry Pyle. This is a... James is playing very scary. Somebody help us! Nobody's coming to help you. Are you the mommy? So uh, what happens next? Hair fibers, fingerprints, trace the call. No need to. He called us. About what? That's what we had to find out, man. You found our club owner. Yeah, he was in the middle of a date. Interrogation. I spent three nights texting that check. He couldn't have arrested me before I got carpal tunnel. <laughs> I need to see Miss Paul, please. Sorry, no can do. Chief's orders. Cops. Real cops only. Well, if memory serves, another one of the chief's orders is no drinking on the job, right, Lou? Do you want me to check your top right drawer and see what I find? <laughs> you will not find anyone better than me to teach your son how to wield a sword. I gave you my offer. So, do you accept? Because I have no more time to waste. Yeah, good luck with your son. He's going to need it. And then I saw him coming out of Giza Mott's front gates. I questioned others in the square about it. Nice. 
Is this the right address? Don't be a dummy. This is the house. Did you have to wear that shirt? It's a comfortable shirt. It's so weird. You keep your clothes in the car. How's that weird, babe? What? Are you a homeless person and you're living in your car? Yes, I am, actually, in the night you kicked me out. <laughs> I thought you got rooms. You thought I got rooms four nights a week after so many years. I'm not made of money. Shut up. <laughs> when the baby is with us, you can't take off like that. Would you stop yelling at me all the time? I can try. Okay, good. Where are these people that open the door? They heard you the first time. And yet here we be on the stoop outside. <laughs> so good. Hey, hey, yeah, I, I heard some yelling. Wanted to make sure everything was okay. Definitely not me or definitely not me. So we were napping. All right, good. Uh, there's some homemade kimchi out in the patio if you guys are interested. <laughs> uh, we're actually on our way out. <laughs> well, on the way out, you can grab a little. That sounds delicious. Mark, you used to be my best friend. We were like brothers, going to the movies together, traveling, playing sports. Brother, I love you, but I can't watch you do this to yourself anymore. You need help. Maybe I just drop this one. Oh, on. my favorite. Here it's it is. That fucking task rabbit, you know? Mm. Hey, I have a family, asshole. Oh, sorry, not you, the other ones. Look, if you can't crack this idea, there's no Silicon shame. Valley. A lot of really smart people have gotten stuck on it. Interesting. Oh, you're doing great work, by the way. <laughs> Fuck you. Definitely. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. That's great stuff. Uh, I got to give a little small clap for that. <laughs> Without further ado, let me introduce my great friend, James Babson. There he is. Another small clap. Hey, <laughs> what's up, dude? What's up, James? <laughs> Thanks for having me. Babs, thank you. Oh, enough of the clap. That's ridiculous. Enough of the clap. The perfect combination of anger and comedy. I, I guess I never <laughs> really. I know that's your bag. That's your jam right there. It's I never jam, really dude. tapped into that. Angry you know, comedy. It's a thing. It's a yeah, whole genre. It actually is, though. I, I really, I love it. It's my kind of genre. <laughs> but you do you do the perfect like uh, you do the perfect fierce but dumb is that fair to that's say that's my yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's fun it's the fun it's the, it is fun comedy like exasperation is a funny yeah. it's a funny thing to play man yeah they always get yeah the kind of you know every I mean? the everybody who just just can't catch a break. Basically. It's just not working out. <laughs> it's just it's not working. Out. Anytime I see so like a character like it's not working out, I'm like, let me play that guy. Is that like, the I, I relate? Is that life imitating? But like art? beleaguered, yeah, beleaguered, just tired people yeah. who don't things just don't go their way. Just like not, that's for me. Bitter, uh, slightly bitter about it, uh, but you play for him sure. beautifully, and <laughs> wow. <laughs> I I, ha I saved that by the way. I didn't watch it myself. Um, oh, right on. In advance, I wanted. I wanted. It's to a long. It's actually kind of a. Longer... That's your extended version. Yeah. That's yeah. The extended exactly. Version. That's a long for audiences for the actors out there. <laughs> the average no more than three minutes. minutes. Yeah. No yeah. more than three minutes. That's three a little. Minutes. But yeah. I I I wanted to share your body of work really, and I'm glad. There's ah. a few things in there that um weren't uh, that I know of that you didn't have every absolutely everything in there that you've ever done, but a bunch of stuff I haven't seen yet. And I remember Silicon Valley was one of my favorite shows, and I'm watching it, and all of a sudden you popped up and told that guy to go. You're like, I know that dude. <laughs> <F and> stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my no, god, I gotta dude. beat that now. I gotta put a quack in. Um, quack yeah, it, dude. Quack it, and I was like, yeah, that's Babs. That's perfect. So big Babs. Thanks for being part of the show, man. I really yeah, dude. It's so to, cool uh... to be here, man. It's, I love it. And I the other it. thing, of course, I do is I don't catch up with anybody if i know i'm gonna have them on the podcast so we we do have a lot to catch up on and i think it's just good with sure um find out what's up um so but let's Absolutely. go back <laughs> before we go to what's up let's go back what's up dude what's up <laughs> <laughs> um because i don't know if audiences care too much about what what's like genuinely. what's up with us what, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh if you're uh, an up-and-coming aspiring actor babson is the guy who um <laughs> can kind of walk you through a lot of the steps. And that's why I think you're a great guest um, for right. this particular kind of show because beleaguered in uh, your art beleaguered, dude. and beleaguered <laughs> <laughs> in your performance, yeah. and beleaguered in life has been the, the, the watchword 
Um, but you did, you, you, you studied, you went to Carnegie Mellon, right? Mm hmm. And you, yeah, when I, yeah, yeah. No, you tell me. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I went, to, I studied there in the like mid 90s. Yeah. Uh, out of high school, I, I knew I kind of wanted to. My older brother's best friend had gone there for like technical theater, and I like worshiped this dude. So I was right. like, I want to go to Carnegie Mellon. I had no idea if that was even an acting school. Right. I just like right. this guy. And it turned out it was a, it's a good program. It's intense. I mean, it's definitely not for everybody at that age. You know right. what I mean? So like you're a 18. lot of, yeah, a lot of uh, acting programs in the States are, let's say, reputable ones or, or, or grad schools. And this is an yeah. undergrad four years. So it's a little different. So it was, it was a lot at that age. But yeah, it was four years, man. It was uh, pretty intense. But, um, but I knew you... what I wanted to do. Yeah, I felt like I was in the right place. I was and like, you I got some I, out like, of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, there's arguments about training and you know, a lot of yeah, people yeah. take a lot of pride in not being trained and, Right. whatever man i mean i think any way you can learn this do it i mean for me it's like meeting my friends like i have st still have a lot of very good friends from that time so for me it was like about just forming mm. those bonds yeah and also getting to do stuff like check off and ibsen and stuff like that you would never do right. you alluded to in the th your first episodes like you get to study stuff that you would never ordinarily study on your own like you wouldn't yeah. choose to do that you know so yeah and then after classical that, classical theater, I mean, and you get a uh, classical yeah, theater background, Shakespeare, yeah. and all that kind of jazz, you know. Shakespeare, Shakespeare, even Shakespeare. so, yeah. yeah. And then, and then I was like, I was off to New York. That was like right. a lot of us were like, we're going to New York. I didn't even conceive of going to L.A. or that I would ever do a TV show or a movie. Was that because you thought New York was yeah more more about the craft and more about yeah? Real acting? I think may, maybe on some level there is that. That that is a thing. If you're a New York actor, you're somehow yeah. like a deeper a, a, a dude proper, than if you're yeah, not. Actor. But and I I was all about. I'm like sure. But for me, it was just a. I went to the, a theater training school, and I had only done theater since I was a kid, and I wanted to be a professional stage actor. That was that. I mean, I thought that mm. TV acting and film acting is something other people do. I didn't even. I love movies. Right. I just was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to. You do never. This. Saw I just didn't even. On camera. Not at all. Right. And so I, I did, but then I was, I got to New York and I was like, making a living as a stage actor is like not really a thing. I mean, yeah. it turns out, I mean, unless you're a musical theater, a lot of people from Carnegie do Broadway and musical theater and stuff like that. For me, I was like, okay, I did some downtown, like funky, arty theater for free yeah. for a few years, yeah. but I was like, okay, <laughs> this is not, sense. this is not cool. New York. Right? Um, but you're not yeah. a musical theater guy. You're not a song and dance. No, guy. I mean, I say I sang, uh, I, I sang, I could sing, and but I didn't dancing and no. Yeah, I'm like, movement. That's no one, no one was asking me to do that. Right. You know what I mean? They weren't like, we need to see you dance and sing. Yeah, I saw you. Um, I saw you in the shotgun scene there. Yeah, bro. <laughs> 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 not a good that was my that was my that was my fat that was my hefty, uh, that was your hefty skinny, days <laughs> i had a i had a year and a half where i porked it and i got all this work i'm like okay that's maybe yes, the they, there is work in there i hate a big to tell fat, people yeah dude i it was crazy my agent's like what's going on yeah i, I was just booking left and right i was I like I, I just got fat i don't know i was depressed yeah. who knows why and so uh but and so I look at that reel. I'm like, okay, there's very. It wasn't stages. Scorsese calling up saying, "Listen, you need to bulk up for this role. You gotta." <laughs> Not no no right. That was my joke with my friends. I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm right. I'm getting I'm getting fat for that role. This that is my uh, this exist. is my raging bull. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so I I went to drama school and all that, and then I did New York stuff. And um, did you study anywhere then, else in New York too? You circle? No, no. Uh, yeah, I did. Yes, like rep, actually, did, I you did, did circle rep. Then. Circle east it was a part yeah. of circle um circle repertory um is it circle and square but yeah, there was a lanford wilson and yeah. um there was this uh gosh i'm blanking now but um i were i did well, study like a little bit there ago. with yeah with these guys <laughs> yeah it was 100 years ago why would i remember that right um Last but century. i didn't i was sort of like man i've been i've done the training thing um let's forget classes let's yeah. just try to get them work. ready to yeah and then um i wound up working off broadway and joined the union and that was cool and then um but my friends from high school amy and jocelyn shout out to amy and jocelyn out is it there. amy huck from, yeah amy huck and oh, jocelyn yeah, Linder from right, uh, columbus friends. ohio yeah that's right because i was i grew up basically between pittsburgh and columbus ohio and then uh 
and then they were living in Prague, um, right. like teaching English and doing theater and stuff like that. And they said, "Hey, I know Amy very out? well as well, obviously." Yeah, yeah. and um, that's like right. That. And then they were uh, they, they invited said, hey, you out, so that's how you kind of yeah. Got... Okay. They were saying, "Hey, we're doing a production of Hamlet in English in Prague for the summer. Do you want to come do it? Oh, like, we cool. won't, we won't pay you." I'm like, "Well, that's fine because I'm broke anyway. I'm not used to getting paid." Um, and I went out there just for two months, and then the claws of Prague, yeah, the claws nabbed me. <laughs> they do. I think I went out there. And that's for when about I met you. Six weeks, yeah, yeah. I went out there for about six weeks myself or something. Then I went. Oh, really? Just like full. Yeah, I just went. And you're like, actually, dog. I'm going to stay for six years. Yeah, for however well, long you were there, I was there for. How long were you there? Like three, four, or five? Uh, it was like five years. Yeah, five yeah. years, man. Uh, yeah. Three months there. turned into five years. I was there. I'll do it for audiences. <laughs> oh my god! Watching on YouTube, I know a decade. I was there for a full decade. Um, it's awesome, dude. It was. Uh, so I remember sort of meeting you, kind of pretty early because if you were in theater or into acting um that was a fairly tight-knit community english-speaking actors Not, it was yeah, already it was only a handful of us only a handful and every expat knew every other expat anyway because it was a small town and it was just bizarre totally. i didn't i didn't go there expecting that there would be any acting me neither communities right i went there to, i'm like i'm done i'm maybe i'm done with this whole thing like i yeah. i knew i was going to do a play but that was like what am i doing in new york this is really hard they yeah. don't you know what i mean the upside of going to a drama school, let's say outside of a New York or LA, is that you're focusing really on the work that you're doing. There's no cur there's no agents running around Pittsburgh. Right. Although now there's a lot. I was like, yes. I went. But the problem with that is that when I went to, New I didn't have any sense of how to really do this professionally. Right. right. And so I was like, man. So probably and your, I was like, and your school didn't teach you, right? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, someone would come. A casting director would come. Oh, really? Be like, that's more know, than I, I got. Feel so, I feel so university. sorry for you people. You know, you're, it's <laughs> yeah. really hard to make ooh, a living. Ooh, yeah. But when you're young and some old person like me mm -hmm. now is like, hey, kids, it's really hard out there. I'm like, yeah, bro, but I'm not going to be you. Yeah, but I'm like, I'm definitely not yeah. going to be you. I'm not going to burn I'm going to be. Yeah. And then cut to 30 years later. I'm like, actually, kids, it's really you're, hard. You're, kids, you're it's, going to school. <laughs> so yeah, telling it's kids. really hard, man. Like, you don't you really fully understand how difficult the profession will yeah. be when you're young. Because you're just like, dude, screw that. I'm not going to be your old ass. I'll I'm be the one that cuts through. I'm going to be, yeah. It'll be difficult for yeah. everybody else. I don't know if me. you can relate to that, but I, oh, yeah. I felt that. You know, I think if you don't have that kind of crazy ego or sense of self, you wouldn't even bother with it because it, it's 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 impossible. You better be you better be certain of your talent. That's yeah. what I would say, and that's and the then whole. You like, realize, yeah, <laughs> sorry that 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 you have to learn other skills. I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing here with this project, the off stage, yeah, off stage acting, because I, I it, your talent is on, on you. Right. And your training is really on you. Well, go get trained wherever you find, you know, and sure. you'll find and, and there's all kinds of different ways. I don't want to get involved in that, essentially. Like I, I teach actors on the side, but that's that's yeah. not the primary goal here. The primary goal is to give you like the 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 tools to understand that talent isn't enough. You gotta be right. a business, you know, and you gotta understand the game and you gotta find, you know, how to hustle and promote and blah 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 blah. All the sure. stuff that goes along with it um yeah but yeah absolutely and so yeah. it's yeah <laughs> but i think you got <laughs> you and i we, we got a bit lucky and this is kind of where things turned was because back in those days of course and we're talking the 90s into the 2000s early 2000s so we're talking 20 25 years ago even more where la new york london where that was your options as an English speaking yeah. actor, you might be able to get a little work up in Vancouver. They were, they were shooting some stuff up there. Yeah, Toronto, know, maybe Toronto. Yeah. You heard some stuff cause it was cheaper. Uh, you know, but if you wanted to be a real serious actor, you had, and, and, and an American, you had kind of two choices and that was LA or New York. And there were two very different types of actors then. Right. Like we said, yeah. One was very shiny. If you were pretty and shiny and had yeah. perfect teeth, you headed to LA and it didn't matter if you could act, to be honest, if you had, you know, the, the, the look, um, yeah, it didn't hurt, but, um, or if you yeah, wanted just, to be, a, yeah. if you wanted to be a genuine actor, there was stuff going on in Chicago, a little bit improv and some things like yeah. that. And, but we, I turned my back on it as well. 
and I went back to school for a master's degree in writing because I was like, I got burnt out on LA, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was like, I, I was grinding it out. Yeah. I just, I did 10 years and was grinding out and doing all these castings. And I, I got some, I, I got some stuff, but I just saw the game and I said, you know what? If this is what it takes to like make it, and these are the people I have to kind of be around and associate <laughs> with. with. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saying, that's not my style. So I, I'd rather get out of here. Let me go to Europe. I was like, 28 landed yeah. in Prague and uh picked up and started doing some theater with some people um and I did Wenceslas Square did you ever see that did you see that show no no that was that was that was written uh that was right before my time was it I just before your time I remember hearing about it yeah okay so I even showed up I was like summer of 2000 2001 okay I kind of showed up you showed up yeah. um Anyway, not to reveal my age. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Wait, like, dude, we know like, we're looking at your face. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> <and hide. laughs> Anybody who's watching on YouTube knows. Um, <laughs> but just to walk through the history of it, so I yeah. I did it. I did that. Nancy Bishop saw me in the show. I played the the lead. It was a it was a show written by a guy um, about Czech people and stuff. It was a good show. Um, and then she got me cast in. Hitler, the rise of evil. That's right, dude. Which was our first, well, it was certainly my first big gig. Me too. And you too. And you had, well, tell everybody the role you got. Yeah, I, I played Rudolf Hess, which right. was crazy. I was like, <laughs> Just, okay. Hitler, what? yeah. And that, yeah. Was, that was cool because I had done a couple of jobs. You mentioned Nancy because Nancy was the casting director. Right. Yeah, uh, she she's still in your in Prague, and now she's one of the biggest casting directors in Europe. I mean, in terms of especially as an American, yeah, you she's know, got a big name sort of behind out. her, and she's respected and all that. Yeah. She was casting, you know, I had done a couple of, I think the first thing I did was the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I got cast as like marksman number three or something. And I played oh, like right. this assassin, and right. it was wild, dude. I couldn't even believe that I was in a movie. I'd never done anything. Yeah, anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe like a short in college or something, but nothing. I mean, and I didn't, again, I didn't think right. that, you know, when I had finished the production of Hamlet, I actually got a job in Ireland randomly from one of the cast members there and then went to that for a couple months. Then came, I'm like, you know what? I'm coming, I'm sticking around. I'm going back to Prague. I forget New York. Right. This is just, I just felt like there was stuff I realized in Prague during that summer, there was stuff going on. And then I linked up with Nancy and Maya who's the other casting director, commercial yeah. casting director and, and agent. And then, yeah, started auditioning for these films. I'm like, there's auditions for movies in Prague? What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and then and not only that, tons of them. And that's when I met you in that circle because you were doing commercials and you were doing all kinds of stuff. And so, uh, yeah, and then we got cast in this Hitler miniseries. And I was like, oh, dude, this is wild. Which was, was like yeah, that was a real part. And you had, I don't know, you had you were months on the set. Yeah, it was like I had like 60 shooting days. And <laughs> that was why cuz usually I have one shooting day. You know what I mean? Yeah, you show up and yeah. I'm like I'm the kid, I'm like, you know, a distraught onlooker number 5 or something. Yeah, and, yeah, you yeah. Know, that's that. Wretched, you know or, or yeah. beleaguered, yeah, Police beleaguered <laughs> wretch number 5. Wretch. Yeah, I played a few of those. <laughs> wretch number 6. Yeah. And then and then suddenly it's a real role. I'm like holy smokes and so I just learned from watching Robert Carlyle and and I got to watch these guys in action. Like, yeah, wow, you worked opposite immediately to go from kind of nothing to working opposite Bobby Carlisle to to friends. Yeah, and Bar Bobby, but Bobby, uh, yeah, for, for sure. everybody. <laughs> but you it was a great Every education. Yeah, mm. and it was my big thing too. And I, I'm going to tell you a little story you might not remember actually, but it's worth kind of reiterating because I do tell people this if I go back to this 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 period and I I, I kind of relate this anecdote, which is. I got, I wasn't as lucky as you in that I got Hitler's Landsberg prison guard <laughs> was the, uh, hey, bro. the character, <laughs> you know, Hey, no small uh, parts, no though. small parts, only, <laughs> only cold <laughs> prisons, uh, to play in, um, which that, that was a whole nother story. And the director, remember the director, the, the <laughs> French Christian dude, the, 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 the leather Christian pants. And <laughs> Christian Duguay. Duguay riding his motorcycle. He didn't know my name, yeah. <laughs> he was, I don't Six think weeks he in, he's like, you. I'm like, it's James. I've been here for literally two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was really uh, riding like, his but I, Harley around Prague in the middle great of Great guy. No, it's, yeah, yeah. Great guy. Uh, I don't think he's with us anymore. But um, 
interesting experience but so i show up to set now the night before i'm going to just i want to reiterate this quickly um so the night before i had this kind of monologue right uh that was me introducing hitler hitler goes to prison it's bobby who's playing hitler uh carlisle and i am showing him into his prison and i have to go through this whole speech about kind of how honored we were to have him in our prison was the idea because we were all fascists yeah, you know we, we loved him he was a big deal and so it was like oh and um, herr hess is living right next door and um you have use of the grounds the swimming pools downstairs you know breakfast is served at seven i mean whatever it was it wasn't that but it was like this whole speech of me like <laughs> <laughs> walking him through the the hotel right. room of the prison that he was in a big suite and he had all his writing materials there and that's where he wrote his book and stuff mein kampf i guess um and they had pulled the speech the night before and they go oh you're not doing that monologue uh cool no they had, they had pulled it maybe even a week a week before they go you're not doing that monologue you just have these three lines or something and i was like okay no sweat Whew. um I, I can handle it then the night before i get an email and says oh no they want you to do that monologue again and so now my first big gig freezing cold dank prison in the middle of nowhere in Czech Czechoslovakia you know uh Bobby Carlyle dressed as Hitler like yeah. walking around so there's a Hitler after all after all swastikas everywhere uh and I've got this massive monologue that I am not prepared for and the the director and everything else and guess who I had with me as an ally dun 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 James Babson dun 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 none other than Mr. James Babson, who we shared a trailer, you don't remember, <laughs> right. we, we shared a trailer, and I was like, I remember, dude, dude, bro, I'm out of my depth, I don't know what the F I'm doing here, and you were like, just chill, and you talked me down off the ledge, really, and helped me, and, and ran the lines with me, even though you had your own scenes and everything to shoot, you ran the lines with me, and you were like, there, and I, I, I was like, you were my touchstone, because I was out of my depth and that you had already done a couple you had done like a few weeks on the thing already and you had done a couple other things yeah the jitters were sort of a little bit off although not yeah. fully now but I you mean, can I tell me about yeah. everybody yeah and it's you know yeah, i had the similar thing where they just gave me this new monologue on the day mm. <laughs> and i'm like what terrible because i'm not used i'm used to just not i mean honestly the dexterity of film acting and yeah I remember my first day on with with lines. I'd been sort of in the background. Right. I have to like pull up in this 1930s whatever. Oh yeah. yeah. Jalopy. Yeah. And like I run out. I get out. I have to park the car on a bridge. It's like <laughs> six in the morning. It's freezing. Right. Get out of the car. Clutch and old run transmission. Yeah. To like this mark and right. be like Hitler. I have news. <laughs> Your first or line ever that. in a big yeah. show. This was a CBS like, miniseries, but we're way. doing this sort of mid Atlantic television. accent where they yeah. don't want an American accent. They don't want a British. I'm like, right. Hitler, there's news or something there's, like there's this. News, I don't know what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. And then I'm wait and I, I'm like, Hitler. <laughs> and then, and they and the director goes, God, you. He doesn't know my name, of course. Right. You hit your, hit your effing mark. Oh, and I'm like, what's a mark? Cool. And I look down and I'm like, 10 feet from my mark. <laughs> I'm like nowhere near it. I have no idea because I can't. I'm like, how do I look at my mark and how do I? Right. I don't know what I'm doing. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't. Teach and I'm you like, that. oh my god. And then Bob, Bobby's like, hey James, don't worry about it, man. You know, he's like, he's like, that says more about him than it does you. And he was like calming me. Your, I'm like, was that your you. Scottish? That was that was really good, guys. Just in it was case good. you wanted a, a Scottish Sounded dialect good. lesson. Um, but he he was like he was really comforting to me. Yeah. I'm like, this guy's playing the lead, and he's like, it's okay cool you know and then he later told me a story when he was doing i think the beach or something like this and yeah oh the the he's like the director named danny boy would always go up to like the day players and and sort of comfort them and give them a lot of um confidence oh. because he's like look the director knows that yeah. what i can do and what the cap right. they know right. what they can do right. this guy's the x factor this guy might be nervous he might not do this all the time and he needs that confidence and and that's what I think Bobby was trying to say to me. He's like, hey, you're cool, dude. It's okay. Yeah. People yeah. screw up all the time. You do another take. He should know better type yeah. of deal. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And and that's so, and, and with you, like like having like, here's a new monologue. You're like, whoa. And now a director could have been like, hey, man, I know we're throwing a lot at you. 
but like let's let's just run it a few times you know but i'm sure it wasn't that way you know it was just like no uh, i you know he, they walked me into the cell and he goes all oh, right let's let's hear your your bit and i kind of was still learning it because they just dragged me literally dragged me out of the trail and i don't think he understood that i had just gotten it and he, yeah. he i did it for him and he looks at me and he goes uh-huh okay and i could tell in his head he's like <laughs> post you know like he's like so now uh, do it for okay. real like okay yeah. let's do it for do real it again and i'm like yeah. uh I, and i've got the thing in my hand i'm sort of reading it still because i'm going uh but bobby was really cool to me too at some point i was freezing because i was it was ice cold yeah. there and it was winter um what a fun and, way to learn about doing this kind of yeah. work though yeah. you know because and that's the unique thing about Prague, where suddenly we're these american dudes living over here we could work i mean dude i wasn't i mean foreign police aren't listening but i mean i wasn't <laughs> legal no i just no paid way. like a tourist tax and i just was like winging it and it was a uh, wild west thing but we were able yeah. to get into these productions because they needed american actors or english native english speaking actors i wasn't in the union i wasn't in no. sag i didn't even know what sag that's was. why we got yeah that's why we got the opportunity you know and so we got hired a lot but it yeah. gave you this opportunity to to fail yeah you know and it's it's hard to fail at that level because you're like oh no but no one cares really yeah and at the end it's of the only day, two lines i mean you had a big part but yeah. sometimes it's only a couple lines well, but yeah but i didn't have a lot of lines i had a lot of just lurking yeah. in the back i mean i, I yeah. had a couple of scenes but like it was a lot of me just being around but it was to learn the language of film acting yeah. and yeah so That's for any education. actors out there it's like get get find yourself get on in a situation set. where yeah get yeah. on set man <laughs> like get yes your set. training will kick in but like student film whatever it's yeah. like get in front of that, that camera is something to be reckoned with and you got to learn it. You've got to learn it. I keep telling you that to, to young actors. Just go run coffee, man. I know you want to be an actor, but go be a PA, like a fourth yeah. AD and run. Be in the be, environment. Be there and figure it because out. Because that, that even though I, as I progressed and worked in Prague, when I moved to LA, I thought that would be some like, oh my God, I've done all these movies now. And yeah. I didn't have relationships with casting directors in LA. So that hurt me. I was oh, yeah. cast out of Europe, so I thought it would help, but it, but it did give me that experience. So when I did finally start working in LA, I was like, okay, at least I've done this before. So you before know, we go and, to LA, what project? Sorry, what are sorry, the yeah. No, 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 that's all right because yeah. we're we're getting there. Uh, yeah. What are the so what you did? Uh, Solomon Kane. So there's a Prague, few big I ones. Did, I did a bunch of stuff. I did the biggest one. I did Hellboy. That was another. Yeah, oh, Hellboy. Hellboy. Yeah. Hellboy was the same contract length as hitler so i literally did it i i ended i remember this date because it was so weird i ended the hitler film on the 11th of march and then i started hellboy on the 12th of march wow and they were wow. both three month con deals so i had six months of work which was insane i again i had never done anything more than i did some commercials and day player stuff but i was suddenly like those yeah. are those are too chunky. And now, what was kind of happening months. to you? Yeah. What was happening to you ego wise and sort of like, I, I mean, was, what was changing? You know, that's an interesting question because I, I was really happy, <laughs> but I yeah, have a hard I remember. time. This is, <laughs> but this is my, but this is my <clears throat> own psychological problem that I've been working with on for many, many years is like this fear of success and or embarrassment of success. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like, so relatively speaking to Prague, I mean, if you look at the big picture, these are small parts, but to relative to where we were living in a group of 20 actors living in Europe, landing these roles was a big deal. Yeah. And, and I would disagree were, with you. And I, I just okay. disagree because a little bit because uh, people would die to have, you know, a walk on a one day on a movie or something like that. The, it's not yeah. a, you're not playing a list, obviously, but you were down. Right. I mean, you're getting b and c well, i call it b and c list yeah i i wouldn't i'm not down trying to downplay the work itself but i see i think just if i look at if i look back at that stuff and i look at what i did it was you know it, it was good but it wasn't like it for where we were it was like huge yeah you know what i mean but and you you, you know as you it's not the lead or it's not the supporting guy who's right. in a, a thousand scenes right but for where we were it was a big big deal but I was some embarrassed sometimes because the actors would be like, oh, look at, you know, they'd give me this sort of like, oh, look at you, you're working. I'm like, oh, it's nothing. And I would downplay it like I'm mm. doing right now. Like, oh, it's, oh, it's only a few lines. Or, oh. And my sister, I remember talking to her, she's like, why don't you just be proud of what you're doing? You don't have to apologize because you're working. You know, because right. sometimes I felt like I didn't want to stand out 
because I would, you know, I, that's a separate maybe issue, but no, it, it's weird. Okay. Like some, yeah. like dealing with that sort sort of Imposter thing. I was sort of like embarrassed. A bit. Yeah, yeah. A bit of that and a bit of like, who am I? And I don't like to mind you, if I wasn't getting a job, I was super angry. So I was like, I want a job. So I was, it was conflict. I, so ego back to your question, like ego, it was sort of weird because I felt part of my ego was like, hell yeah, dude, I just booked stuff. I'm great. Yeah. Wow. I can do this work. And the other part of me is like, oh geez, like, um very gratifying embarrassed yeah it was weird i was like kind of torn about it all but it was really gratifying and it made me feel like wow I, i'm actually working as an actor for real yeah like that's crazy and i've been hanging i hang on to that moment because in successive yeah years, we're going to talk been, about de yeah. how demoralized you got when you got to la <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't but, worry uh, folks. In <laughs> in Praha, but there i was like at the top of my game there. biggest fish I was able to in work. the smallest pond I was able I to work a lot and do commercials and do these films and yeah. we, you know theater and stuff like that. No, we became big, big, big fish in small. You became to me. You became sort of the biggest fish in the smallest pond. I'll use that metaphor again. Um, and and I was also up there. I, I did Hellboy as well. I wasn't. Uh, I didn't have the, quite the role you had, but um, I worked with Guillermo and uh, had had about yeah, two. You weeks. worked on tons of stuff, dude. And, and a lot you know, of commercials and, so, and stuff, yeah. Tons of commercials. You were always working. And and I think that some people, you know, were supportive of that. And some people were like, you know, catty about that. But it's a small world, you know. So it the thing I think that helped us. Do, yeah, yeah. The thing that kind of helped us was that we were genuine actors. So there was a lot of people that were doing it that weren't. Yeah, there were backpackers, they, like yeah. who were traveling through Europe traveling who happened through. to stumble upon. Or and they, they would work kind of jobs and they would, yeah, they just come in. Maya knew them or something and they'd get a commercial. There was that one guy, he got every dad. He played every dad in every commercial. And oh. you looked at him, he looked like a dad. I don't remember his name. He was Midwest guy. He had a regular day job. He was like some kind of accountant with an American firm. And he just had his oh, yeah. the hair looked like American no, dad. About. The smile was perfect. Mm -hmm. He looked the right age to be somebody. He just everything. But he was yeah. no kind of actor at all. And he booked. I mean, he just booked and booked and booked. And he would look at me kind of in, in awe and, and be like, oh, you're you're an actual actor. And I go, yeah, but you, you do like 10 commercials a you're year. You're working your ass off. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. And, and that can translate, I'm sure, into where you are now in London and, and being in L.A. where you talent is like a. And that that's just secondary one piece yeah. of the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, it's like, OK, great. You know, yeah. You know, it, it's a, a lot of the stuff is our modeling jobs. And relaxation right. it's about like just if you if you're a chill person and you're not going to be thrown by the camera you could get yeah. work you know yeah that's and that's right, how yeah. a lot of people in Prague did it i mean they were just like and in a way i envied that because i was like overthinking these things sometimes overthinking these tv commercials so like dude just lighten up yeah the commercials like, for sure but uh, the acting yeah. stuff and the movies that was clear there was a handful yeah. of us that were actors and even friends of ours that were getting other things they knew they recognized that we had degrees in theater we were yeah theater yeah. guys and, you know we'd been doing it a long time so right exactly that, that, and it helped that, man i'll tell you that yeah it did help but that i mean part of it part of this whole like again this whole project i'm doing is based on that like i realized when i got to the set i didn't have a clue nobody taught nobody prepared me for that in fact i do a course <laughs> called what to expect on the set which fairly yeah. successful that's because good because once you book the job you know that's up to you book the job is up to you but yeah. what do you do once you book the job who do you yeah. talk to about getting a cup of coffee well, it's a good point. Not the director. And that's why I think, <laughs> right. That's why I think this podcast interview is so cool because it's like there's a lot of, you know, especially in LA, this what I call like seething ambition. Everyone's just ambitious. Yeah, Everything's yeah, just yeah. ambition. Ooh. And they, a lot of want and they want to be an yeah. actor. Blah, blah, blah. But what does that mean? Like yeah. when you get the gig, do you know right. what you're doing? Yeah. You put so much emphasis on the audition and, and making an impact. And, and right. because you have this fantasy that you want to be on TV or something. And it's like, well, okay right. dude but do you know what you're doing like right. do you know how to break Are down you a scene a pro? do you know yeah. yeah like like the dexterity will come with experience but do you understand the nature of what it is you're doing in storytelling That's why half these actors get get rebooked you see the same actors over and over again it's not always because you know they they can sell tickets or they're a-list and stuff it's it's down to the fact that they know how professional you are i call it the i call it the two hundred thousand dollar shot uh when i'm teaching and things because you will get to the set that day and you've sort of described the same thing. I did some big, big shots where it's a $200,000 shot. The explosion goes off. 
the yeah. the car comes around the corner the helicopter's coming down you are meant to run and the camera comes back and you have to hit your mark and give your line and if you miss that any part of that you as an as an individual actor you just cost the production two hundred thousand dollars no pressure and, right no pressure <laughs> but you know who it's are they gonna funny. book dude i just i did a commercial the other day and i hadn't right. booked a commercial in a long time right. um been a couple of years and it was big spot for a big car i can't i don't know if i say whatever but it's a big car I company I think you can. and it's like it, it's there's crane shots and all this crap and yeah. they got it and i was getting a little like yeah. it's you know i realize you're never really fully out of the woods no. with this work you know and because because yeah. yes i know how to like tell a story or whatever but like i i had my own questions about i'm like yeah. wait is the steady cam operator following me or am i following him yeah. is he going yeah. off of my yeah. look or am i yeah. going off of his right. movement is my is it okay that i'm just making it my own eye line right you knew what they're like cool let's just rehearse it and shoot it i'm like this is a cute there's like balloon you know those balloons with with lights to light yeah it was a night time there's all these balloons everywhere and cranes and helicopters and shit stuff and i was like uh okay yeah okay let's just yeah let i and i and i again like after doing this for a long time i i got a little mad you knew what to ask for I should have I I did but I realized should even after more. I'm like I should have done more I should have been really clear so sometimes you, you know, I'm sort of vibey like do I ask the director a lot of really? questions sometimes still. sometimes yeah. you want well a lot 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 less yeah but I still find there's a little part of me doesn't want to be labeled 20 a prima years Donna. later yeah. yeah and and it can hurt you and and so those lessons like you're never at least that's how I look at it for me and I'm just talking about me man like yeah. everyone's got their own way like I have my own little pro things that I, I don't want to say suffer from, but like I, you, I, when I got home, I'm like, ask more questions. Just never forget. Like, yeah. In, you know, because sometimes you feel very comfortable talking to directors that way. And sometimes they're kind of cold and you're like, you just want to be a good soldier and not, you go, yeah, I got it, man. I got it. And meanwhile, yeah. they're like, okay, yeah. little sound. And I'm like, wait, do what I am I doing? doing? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, try to this be is... cool, man. It's my Pro big tip. lesson to anyone. <laughs> yeah that, yeah don't be professional but not cool uh or you know yeah. the my my pro tip and maybe you tell me what you think of this i always tell people and i do this myself is i go make friends with the dop yeah and the for focus sure puller. absolutely because those guys you can always come up to them and go yeah Whoa, what are you going to be here what are you doing what's the next and they will tell you straight up because they appreciate that because yeah, they got funny you, you. said because that, that's what that's what got me kind of on track the other night because i was like kind yeah. of like okay i'm getting a lot of vagueness in the in the, the director department. doesn't know he doesn't know what he's and doing. so and now Probably because you that. you're not you know it's it's that that car is the star of this thing right. that you yeah so it's like so they're <laughs> focusing on other things they yeah. presume that you know what you're doing you know what yeah I mean? they're Every not going to be wowed they, like it's like it's that's why like they hire you yeah. A hockey coach isn't going to be wild by your ice skating. They're like, well, I presume you know how to ice skate, dude. Right. Like, we're playing hockey here. <laughs> like, right. they presume that you know what you're doing. But I'm like, hey, to the DP, I'm like, hey, so where's the frame? Yeah. Where am I? Where, what are you follow? Like, am I? So yeah, if I know ask. you're following me, I need to be a little unnaturally slow so that camera can, ca you know, I had to ask, I asked him that, you know, yeah. and that helped me out. And so then he's like, great, we got it and whatever. But I was like, but the so director's coming over to the yep. DOP as well. The director's coming and he's going, uh, so what do you think, Charlie? Uh, is this a good shot? And then the guy's yeah. going, I don't think we can get that one. We're going to have to point it here. And the director's going, he, everybody goes to the DOP. That's the that's the best kept secret in all of Hollywood. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Become friends. And and also just be, you're entitled to be there, man. Yeah. And like back to the cool thing. And we right. can jump around to different resume things. But like, I remember on Hellboy is a good example, like a steady cam, where I was totally green. And mm -hmm. I was just turning too fast. Like I'm, I'm chasing some mm. monster and I turn too fast. And Guillermo's like, hey, Babson, what are you doing? You know, like do you, you, you have to call, you have to like a tango. Acting is like a tango. That's a perfect. I'm like, little. okay. <laughs> He's Babson. crazy. He goes, and and the D, and I had to sit with a steady cam guy and I go, so what do we do? Who's leading the dance here? And I didn't know this instinctively. And so once I learned that he's going off of me, then I could like deliberately make this sweeping turn yes. so he's catching the yeah but i didn't yeah. know that i just was like turning and i was like trying to keep it real and just be natural no right it's not natural it's like camera so, awareness but my my desire to be cool and liked prevented me from asking questions yeah. the right way because i was like yeah, yeah i got it dude i'm an actor <laughs>
And meanwhile, cool and liked, like, or did you feel like you had I don't, to? Well, I yeah. felt like I wanted front, to know what I was it, doing. Yeah, front. you wanted to. Front I was like, like you were... I, I was like, I'm, I'm, I got this. Dad. I belong. I, this I belong here. I don't do this every day. Yeah. So like, ask. So any young That's actor who's new, for, yeah, you know, any young actor or old actor for that matter who's starting out, is like, ask questions. Yeah. Where is your frame? Can we practice this? How does this look to you? Take ownership of yourself because. It's very, very easy. And I just told you the other day, I, I found myself for like a minute succumbing to the old me a bit because mm -hmm. of the, where it's like, hey, ask, take ownership of this moment. Don't be afraid to ask, be clear because it's not always clear. And like you said, the $200,000 shot, like they're going to do these big setups and you better be very clear about what yeah. you're doing. And yeah. don't pretend that you know what you're doing when you don't because it's going to cost people a lot of money. And, and you have entitlement to be there because th sometimes you feel like, oh God, I got lucky and gee whiz. And you don't, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff they're goes gonna on. They're going to find out I'm a fraud any minute now. They're going to pull me yeah, out. Yeah. That's a, I mean, I relate to that big time. And, yeah, and so, too. um, it's okay to be new. It's okay to not know they hired you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Like just take. I and the thing the younger is, act. Yeah. Yeah. No, finish. Oh, sorry. I'm kind of segue like zipping aspiring around, actors. Like, we call them because you never know somebody's age. Yeah, exactly. It but I, it, it, I always find that, um, like if we, you know, actors are a rare breed and we have a, a, a rare sort of education, everyone else on the set for the most part, unless you get the rare kind of director that was an actor or is an actor or some, somebody else, they have no clue what you do or how you do it for them. It's like magic trick. I think I just said this recently in another podcast, but it's like, I was literally given like instruction before on the set to like, okay, then you guys come over here and you stand here and then acting, acting, acting. And then, uh, we come back over here and then cut. And they literally just sort of brush over like <laughs> your, your the bit. Whole scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they just go, and then you do your acting and then we, and they're just giving you basically because they're photographers, right? Right. The director is, and especially if it's a car commercial or some director that's like known for his beautiful shots, he doesn't know what you do or how. To them, it's magic dust. So the the DOP doesn't understand. They're just trying to get the shot. So you do have to take ownership. I like that very much. Yeah. You have to sort of take ownership of that and then step in. And because they think it's magic dust, you have a little bit of latitude in there to come in and go, okay, for me to be able to spread all my fairy dust around here and make mm -hmm. the magic happen, you're mm -hmm. going to have to do a couple things for me. And, and they will sort of, you know, out of, out of necessity to get the shot. You don't have to do it in a rude way, obviously, like like I'm doing it now. <laughs> but uh, but you do I it. I have a few <laughs> demands. All right, excuse me. First of all, this cappuccino <laughs> is ice cold, so we'll right. start with that. No, but it is true, man. Because they go, uh, you know, I was on a set of something. They go, one director goes, okay, now we do the blah blah. Yeah, <laughs> like that's now right. we do the blah blah. <laughs> the blah like blah. it's that's like, wait, bit. you mean my scene, the whole yeah. thing I've been studying for three months, the blah blah. <laughs> You mean all because the they just I'm expect to... you to, to, oh, you, that's your world. You do it. And yeah. so if you don't advocate for you. Right. And there's nobody else on the set care. to do that. They will take it. They'll, if it's passable, it works. You yeah. don't want passable. You want memorable. You want something that makes sense. And you have to fight, fight, fight to yeah. get what you want because they will accept subpar stuff sometimes because for them, it's fine. Oh, you see it all the time when you watch, uh, watch stuff. Yeah. You go, ooh. You don't want fine. Yeah, you, I you're see there a performance, to make a, I see a line reading, I see a, a yeah. move. I you go, want oh, to make, you want great. to affect the story, affect the audience, affect, you know, you're, you, you, you know what I mean? In, in, and you in, want to feel good that you're, yeah, that you're contributing to the story in a way. Well, in a natural way, like, like, like in, yeah. a, in an effective storytelling way, not to pull focus, but like in a, in a very, nat you know, you, you, there's an optimal way. Maybe you think the scene should be played and you need to fight for that if you can, you yeah. know, because they, they might least, think it's fine. That it's not so great. yeah or at least find out is that is that what you want is this what you're going for i don't even know that they know off half the time what they're going for um, often no they it's like i think sean penn said something you, you don't know this quote which i like it's like you don't always know if something is bad right but you know when something's good right because you might see something like that's okay and then something really good happens you're like oh okay <laughs> that's yeah. awesome yeah and so like they don't know until you do it 
And so you need to like create that space for yourself. Yeah. But like you just said, did you get the shot? Like at the end of the day, you are hired to do a job and you better be able to deliver that, you know, yeah. you know, you better be Bring able to goods. solve the problem. They're, yeah. they're trying to solve a dilemma and you're there. You're the fix it guy. If you can and you fix better it yeah. and you're good at that and you're able to call out stuff in, you know, in a regular, in a, in a way that's professional and help them with their job, this is what gets you rebooked over and over again. Dude, even I if got, you're not the most talented person in the world, you know, to that point, when I we talked about the from my reel, I had a, a thing on uh, two lines on Silicon Valley, right? Yeah, and I was like, okay, do I audition for this because it's a co star? And I don't know the lingo in London, but in LA, a co star is basically under five lines, call them right. a co star, you know, it, it's yeah. a day player guest star you know you'd be like the main dude of that episode right, co-stars right. a few lines so it's a co-star once you're on a show you can't be on the show again right uh so do i want to do this and i worked part-time at a music venue and mike judge had come in that night and i had okay. just auditioned for silicon valley that day right. so he comes in and i'm like wow hey dude i just read for your uh for your show he's like oh really oh uh, what part oh uh, that's cool <laughs> and i uh i long story short i got a call back i wound up booking it and then we became like facebook buds and he wrote me this note um and it was like something along the lines of like thanking me for for doing a good job and i'm like what dude i had three lines and you're mike judd like what are you talking about but the the moral of the story was like look i like what i was talking about earlier with the lead actors they all know what the principal actors are going to do those small parts, especially yes. in comedy, it all has to be part of the same world. Yeah. There are no accidents. Right. In a drama, you can get away with the shopkeeper going, here's your change. It doesn't have to yeah. be believe <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But in a comedy, you have to be as good as everybody. It's yeah. it's that there's no accidental you have to stuff. Fit. And, yeah. And he's like, Thank you for understanding the tone of this scene wow, because perfect. that that made that work. And I'm like, that makes me feel great. And rather than being the me who's like, Oh, it's only a couple of lines, and I, it's like, no, dude, it's integral to the to what I'm to the story and I'm honoring that. And so kind of hopefully yeah. tying into what we're talking about, it's like these parts you get, whether big or small, you are there to solve the problem, get in there and do yeah. it. Be part and of the, have the, to, the ensemble. Yeah, and you have to be ready to rock because, you know, it pressure is on you. You know, this is why it's the hardest thing is to be our kind of actor. And this is why I, I sort of focus on our kind of actor. I call it uh, where it's, <clears throat> the day player, the the C to B listers, you know, those that you go, oh, I know that guy. I've seen him in a thousand things, but I would never know his name yeah. or her name. Uh, yeah. But but they keep turning up. And the reason they keep turning up is exactly what you said. They're actually much more, uh, I want to say, almost ambidextrous, you know, in, in the way that they're able to, ch chameleonic, yeah, that's not a word, but I'll use it, to uh, that they can use it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, coin it, coin it. I own coin it, it dude. Coin it, chameleonic. Tra trademark it, trademark it. <laughs> Quickly before this comes out. Chameleonic. Um, but I think that's the deal. I, I'm so glad that you made Beavis happy. <laughs> dude, I was thrilled. I'm like, dude, Mike Judge is writing me. I'm like, what Mike the hell? Like, this is crazy, me. man. I'm obsessed with like his work. And so you, it's, it gives you this confidence. And it's like, and it's like, okay, dude, like, don't get hung up on co-star guest star la 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 like you yeah just, man, you just need to work. be and i think that if you're in a situation you know i i wonder if let's say younger actors or let's say actors of a, the tiktok and i feel like we're we're i feel like you we're raising a, a generation is, <laughs> I, I think we're ra there there's a, a generation of film actors being raised that like you no know, these kids these kids <laughs> they're not afraid of a camera they're always on camera right. and so i think you see a lot of young actors who are, are phased yeah. by the stuff that maybe you and i were phased by yeah. jumping onto Big a set camera like, stuff oh, in your dude, face and yeah these guys I mean, are used to cameras all the time so yeah. i wonder if if in a way maybe i'm yeah. wondering if casting agents are, are noticing this like younger actors who are yeah. like really really chill with camera acting because they, they've got these cameras on their and they can practice we didn't have that stuff no, you know it's true and so I think anything to eliminate the nerves is important, you know, however you're able yeah. to work. Um, and the nerves also come from the fact that that it's a big thing, you know, it's going to be out there forever. And uh, you know what I mean? It's like, Oh my me. God, this is going to be widely distributed. 
I know, man. There's so many. Tur- I've done so many turkeys, man. And I'm like, oh well, well that's just the way it goes, dude. Yeah. It's not my. F- I don't know. I'm. T- I, we all think it's gonna be great. And then sometimes you know it's as long as you were good in it. Like, yeah. You look can't at Cranston. Save it, but- look at Brian Cranston's career. He's got a ton of old. You know, crap. And, oh you yeah. Know, it's just for sure, man. He's a legend. I mean, but you the just cream you rises to the top. Work and I don't know. I. I know that a lot of this is like, well, how do I even get this work in the first place? You know, and then so that is a whole another conversation. Like, so let's you know, have that conversation real quick. And, yeah, yeah, because uh, I want to keep going with the 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 journey, the lineage, the James Babson timeline. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yes. So you got a big head uh, about you, and you were the big shot, and you were going to go back to L.A. I, you know what? This is an interesting. I I I remember talking to you. Yeah. Um. At a, a a hang, we were hanging in Prague, and you had yeah. just come back from LA, yeah. and I was like, thirty years old. I'm thinking, am I ever gonna, if I'm ever going to go to LA, like when is that gonna happen? Yeah. Because I'm kind of comfortable in Prague. I'm working. I'm getting experience. I'm singing in a band. I have, I'm in this beautiful medieval city. It's yeah. I'm just having the time of my life, man. I did not want to leave that town ever. I mean, I was yeah. happy, but my ego was a little bit like, hey, man. These other actors drawing. are flying in from, yeah. well, they're coming in from LA and Lon- London and to making play money. real, quote, real, real roles, play, making major roles money. I'm making like, more money. Yeah. Well, I want to do that. And yeah. you had talked to you, was like, hey, man, I came back from LA and I'm just telling you, things are happening out there. I don't know if you remember this conversation, but you, you had just been in LA and you were inspired by what was going on and just yeah. be inspired by the fact that there's work to be had. And I was like, it really played a huge part in me. <laughs> finalizing my thanks todd oh god i, apologize. Um, and, 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 <laughs> I was wrong by the way uh, uh, well I, I was like i need to, and then my friend's manager agreed to work with me he, and so i'm like if i can go to la with a right. manager in my pocket i'm just gonna make this big leap and boy what a leap it was because i had been seduced by Prague and, and the sort of unrealistic nature of working all the time yeah in a small town yeah and to being in LA at 30 some years old, yeah. starting out with no family connections to the yeah. business, no real money to speak of. I'm not a, I'm not Ryan Seacrest. You know what I mean? I'm like a character actor, dude. I'm like, yeah. hey, who, who wants me? Not, and they're like, Clooney. no one. Your last name's not Clooney. Not Clooney, dude. Coppola or something. And yeah, no, I don't have, I don't look like Clooney. I don't have a Clooney. So, so, you know, it's a very, it was a very, uh, I sobering, really effed you up, didn't I? So, dude, thank you, Todd. <laughs> Uh, no, it was hard, man. You know, I tell you why. I tell you why. Man. Can I tell you too? I, this this is part of it because remember Julie? She, uh, she was. Uh, she also got a, a role as the aunt, Hitler's aunt, and that and stuff. Yeah. And she yeah. also went past it, and she went out to L.A. at the, kind of the same time with. And she was more fierce about it. I was like, I just I'm doing CBS miniseries. I've just come out. I'm mm-hmm. I'm this, and I'm going with all that, and I'm going back to L.A. and I'm gonna. Make and it. she had a great role in that miniseries. She had a she big was very role, good, and it, was and it would big. have been, yeah. I mean, it was kind of foolish for her not to kind of do that. Yeah, um, at least try, but not maybe to cut all ties with Prague. But I thought to myself because it was always in the back of my head, like, look, I, what am I Czech now? I mean, I learned Czech, and I was there, I was hanging right. out a long time. But am yeah, I, I going to die here? Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, am I going to? Am I retired? What am I doing? And how how much further can I go with this? And mm-hmm. I was like you, seeing all these people come in from London and LA and New York, and and getting better better roles, and we weren't getting the respect there. And I tried for a little while to create something that was there that could give us all a little bit more kind of respect for not just being local hires, but getting booked on all kinds of things internationally, that just out of Prague, you know, like because that made mm-hmm. the most sense to me. Like if we could start getting booked for stuff that was not necessarily shooting in Prague, maybe in Europe, but Bulgaria, or Romania, other places, and be considered for major roles at the right price point or a little bit better than, you know, something more than we were getting paid, then, then it would have been worth it. It didn't work out. And that's a whole long story. Um, but I did make, yeah. I'd made a stab at it after you'd left yeah. just before I left. Yeah. But I thought to myself, listen, if Babs is having all this success and it was genuinely bro, it was success. Like you were, you were crushing it. I hate using that expression, but you were crushing right. it. And I, just quickly, I'll just say, like, if if you can't go to L.A. and and parlay that into something, like, how can I? Who's ever going to be able to do it, right? So I sent you there in advance to see if it's it an be envoy. Done. 
as an envoy to me. Yeah. And it, then it couldn't be done and you failed miserably. And that's when I said, I'm, I can't go back to LA. <laughs> if James can't do it, I have no. <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, it's, uh, I wonder how your audience can relate to this or if some of them are expats. There might be some Americans living in London or maybe people mm -hmm. listening to this or ex. Tons, I think tons it's, here. it's, it's a good, it's, it's a tough one. Cause you can ask yourself, how long am I going to, Am I always going to be a foreigner in this place or I feel, or let's right. say not even in terms of national nationality, like someone's in Atlanta going, do I mm -hmm. ever make that leap? Cause it's, cause it, cause it, cause when we were coming up, there was no Atlanta and Pittsburgh and that wasn't a thing. It was really no. New York and LA, man, London, if you're English, but it like, but, and so Prague was on no one's radar that I knew of. So that was so cool. No. Like, well, it's yeah. like a little secret, but now it's like, it is, at some point, you may want to make the leap to a bigger market. You might want to move to London and try, and it's going to be hard. <laughs> like, there's really no way around it. Like, like, no, everyone's got a different story. Some people just get work right away, man. I mean, there's, that's the maddening thing about what we do. You don't really yeah. know. But generally speaking, it's going to be harder if you go into a bigger pond. Yeah. And LA yeah, for me right. was like, well, I remember driving from Ohio in my old Honda <laughs> Like right. looking at the lights of LA and the distance going, who do I think I am dude, to move to right. this town and be yeah. an actor? What the hell? Even if I yeah. have experience or whatever. And it took a couple of years, man, for me to get my first job. I mean, I was cleaning fish ponds and I was doing, I hadn't had a day job in like seven years. I was working as an actor in Europe right. and, and in New York. And then suddenly I I'm remember. like, what am I doing? How do I, I, I don't even, it, it was hard. Were and you then cursing me every, every day? Like, Todd Kramer. Kramer. Dreamer. Every time Where's you had to clean, the clean the scum out. Yeah, the yeah I was doing you. the weirdest jobs, dude. I was like, I, I like, remember. I was like, what do I checking do? Checking in with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And and I was like, but I was uh, working at a music venue uh, yeah. that I still work at. You can say it. Where, you there. What is it? It's uh, popular. This place called the Hotel Cafe. It's a really awesome place. I visited um, you there. I'm sort of a host two, there. Yeah. And a lot ago. of great artists play there. And I met a casting director there. And she's like, hey, you should take my number. You know, I'm like, okay. And I didn't really think much about it. I wasn't because I'm working the door and I'm hosting and stuff, I'm not like sweating anybody. And if someone's chatting with me, it was kind of a nice position in a way. Cause I wasn't yeah, like trying to talk player. to anyone. They were trying to talk to me. Long story short, I sent her my stuff and I wound up booking my first job. I had a scene with Forrest Whitaker in this movie called wing creatures. And I'm like, Holy smokes. Mm, like, cool. But that's crazy about LA is like you're in LA and I'm like, I'm working the door or whatever. And then I go have a scene with Forrest Whitaker. And then, and then I back. come back to my job the next day. I'm like, what? hell is going on here like yeah. it is a very weird life because you you do work but then if it's right. not enough work you still have the day job you right? still have the day um and so yeah i had done a bunch of films a lot of actors can relate to frog right like what's that yeah man and like so Frog was yeah, the dream no. because you didn't have it was, you know you make a bunch of money you could make i don't know eight grand on a commercial that was a i did a super bowl commercial for when i was in Prague. Yeah. i think i got paid eight thousand dollars which i should have been paid 80 but with that eight thousand, right. that was a year's worth of living with dude my, my rent was 250 bucks a month in <laughs> yeah, yeah if you did the train so i make yeah making that money was Looking crazy and i did a bunch six of commercials months of living. yeah <clears throat> i was work. i was like in this zone of like working in commercials and like, yeah I remember a casting hard to director get out. came. A casting director had come to m the set of a commercial I was shooting to film my callback personally, oh, wow. and then I booked that. God. And I'm just like, dude, what? <laughs> you know, I, am, I felt I like this god. It was crazy, you know. But then, of course, six months <laughs> go by, and you're like, nothing. God. So yeah. then you go to LA, and it's like, screw you, dude. Like, get in line, and it yeah, was a real, yeah. real, Who real, 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 real wake up call. And um, but are you glad you did this, it in the end? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I think that ultimately you have one life to live at one choice to make at a time and it's like i would have i felt like going to la was like going to oz or something it's like you have to go it's like mm -hmm. but it felt like the end of the rainbow which was sort of depressing too i was like because mm, in right. prague i was like well there's always la there's always la there's always la right. it gave me this little wish wishful right. thing to hang my hat on but when you go there you're like well this is where actors come to die like it really felt like this is it and so i had to change my idea of or success of what i thought or fly but uh you know, I had to take off. So I changed my my whole perspective had to shift inside. My six, idea of success and everything shifted. It's like it's relative to what you're doing and what you're bringing to the party. And I just was like, just try to get work and be good and clear, and and that's it, man. And just and eventually, I got an agent. Eventually, meet friends at 
wherever and you take workshops why, and you why? take classes. Yeah. Why did it take you so long to get an agent? You had a great CV. It took me Show years, real. dude. I, I got a manager fairly quickly. Um, and but nobody would represent you. It, it was weird. I got representation. Well, I didn't know I had some friends out here, but I didn't, it wasn't that easy. Um, Valerie McCaffrey is my manager. It has been for many, many years. Yeah. We, with, it took about eight months, actually. And then I did. So it wasn't that, that long. But to get an agent, which is, there's a difference, I don't know about in London, but manager. There's no management can, there's, here. Manager. Okay. Managers aren't licensed. Okay. Anyone could be, I could be your manager. You could be my manager. Yeah. Agents have to have a whole, it's, a, yeah. it's harder to get an agent than it is a manager. And yeah. managers have access to, to, to the breakdowns to submit you for things, but not as much as agencies do. I think if I have this correctly. I don't know. It seemed oh, like manager. I needed an agent. Yeah, you can. And I couldn't, I couldn't get, they just were like, no. I'm like, man. And she told me, she goes, James, you have a crazy resume. You have a lot of experience. That's awesome. And you went to a good drama school. So you're an easy sell, but you don't have relationships with these casting people in Los Angeles. They don't know who you are, dude. And those roles that you did aren't like so stand out. It's like, holy shit. Like, you know, we all saw this. So I, um, it, it was a wake up call that I was like, oh, do casting workshops get to know these casting directors they need to know who you are they don't know who you are right and i and so and then eventually so i did that and then eventually i I, and then i started working in the last few years it's been going pretty well but it took a while man i mean yeah and even still i'm not famous i'm not like you you know you just kind of plug away and i started this year has been good you know i've been getting some more tv work and so but it takes time and I tell actors all the time, like, take a workshop, take train, because yeah, you might think you're some great actor and maybe you are, right. forget it. The, don't, don't worry about that part. Just network, 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 get to know other people, get to know, um, casting people, let them know who you are, you know, collaborate and stuff like that. You know what I mean? That's the best way to do it. I think. In and now you've got, like, you got a series regular, not a series regular. It's recurring. Um, okay. <laughs> on the show i wish it was a series regular it'd be a different yeah. story um yeah. but it's a show called the residence it's going to be on netflix yeah it's fun it's it's a huge cast it's like um uh and it's it's incredible andre brower um has just just passed away and he was one of the leads on the show and right. that that was a real um that was hard um that they're they're still kind of working working through that but um uh, Uzo Duba is the lead, and there's a lot of great, great actors in it. Um, it's like a Knives Out in the White House. Okay, it's kind of like a murder mystery set in the White House. It's so funny, dude. Uh, cool. And so I'm super who psyched. And it's like, you tell, just tell us who did it, real quick. Yeah, I'll just tell you one second. Um, <laughs> who did it? Just They'd love me. that. Just <laughs> that would be so. I know who did it. Uh, I, know I didn't you know did. that part. Um, <laughs> we'll scoop, I'm gonna scoop it, um, man. I gotta get. Oh some my food. lord. <laughs> Uh, but it's cool man it's super cool and it's it's the first i've done a couple of recurring roles before and this is like the first time i've had like more than let's say one or two episodes so it's really fun to be a part of a cast um and yeah man it's like it's never lost on you this being hired to work it's never lost on you. it's always like a privilege it's a blessing for lack of a better word um I, i think you just have to be really thankful for those opportunities man um so uh it's so competitive out here it's insane so uh yeah dude uh, it's yeah so that's that's um that's what i that's that's that um well i think process continues yeah all the stuff that you said that you tried to be back in the day i feel that you have become You know what I mean? Cool, cool. collected, <laughs> professional. All those things yeah, that man. you were doing tw- tw- 20 something years ago on those first gigs. You're there now. I'm seeing. Yeah. It. Do you yeah. feel? It? Thanks, man. Yeah, I do. You know, I think there's like, again, there's always that little. Sure. De- little demon that but goes, that, Are you sure you know what you're doing? Yeah. Um, but it's he's got to be there. It's, way, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. He has to, that and those nerves. Yeah, you got to keep are those. important. I yeah. mean, and I, I, um, it keeps you on your toes and it keeps you kind of, I don't know, honorable is the word, but like you just honor, like it, it 
if you go to paramount yeah. or sony or you, i go to these studio lots and i'm like dude this is a big deal man. yeah like this is no joke like let's this is this is okay you're here to do this you know i think because when you quote struggle or you're you 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 don't really find momentum which is hard to find as an actor because you're just grabbing each job and just hoping that someone sees it and that it's hard to feel like you're a member of that community you know it's i always feel right. like a bit of a guest and so yeah any i know chance, you know what i mean it's yeah, like and, 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 and these shouldn't. these series regulars are like dude we literally do this every day for 100 grand a week or whatever we're making so it's it's such a difference out here it, it it so i don't i think i've never really fully felt like hey like but in terms of confidence and knowing what i'm doing uh, i feel better about that and i i'm really thankful for that because i think you know it, it requires it requires that to to do this work effectively you have to be confident and i'm a thin-skinned kind of guy like some people are super arrogant or are really confident they don't even understand what i'm talking about in yeah. terms of my fear or self-consciousness or they're like what are you talking about dude i'm an actor I'm like they, some people don't have that i'm definitely not that guy so i i'm very aware of my own fear and and nerves and all these things so i have to really really work on that and just and i tell any students i coach because i coach acting sometimes and stuff i'm like preparation is the enemy of anxiety it you, you have this anxiety about things like gee what's it going to be like and what, how do i it's preparation yeah preparation read the script a hundred times no go over the lines a hundred times literally like no. you're prepared. watch everything you're, the director's ever done yeah everything yeah exactly do your work and yeah. you won't be freaking out you'll be cool man like you'll be yeah. comfortable like it's it's the nerves come from oh my it's because you don't know it's like prepare you don't know what to prepare, expect prepare, yeah, prepare. Pre preparation that's as it. best you can and also be prepared like you like here's a new monologue or here's a you gotta be like you got to be flexible and that's part of being prepared too. the training, yeah. staying up on top <clears throat> take the improv classes, take the scene study yeah. classes, just so I'm that a big when they fan do of training. You, yeah. I'm a big fan. Of, a lot of people are like, you got to, they, they say, Hey man, I, I'm self-taught. I'm like, that's great. But you say you're self-taught, but you, you've been on a show for that. 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you've been training every General day. Like, hospital, in, yeah. Unless, yeah. Unless you got a, a film crew hanging around you all day long, like, you need to practice and try different methodologies. I took a class, um, a Meisner class, which Oof. I always got put off by like guru, yeah. like people talking about methodologies and stuff. I'm like, whatever, dude, just, yeah. I don't know, Stanislavski. I'm, but I have to say, I loved it. It gave me a, a new appreciation for the work I do because I learned a different methodology that helped me combine that with the other methodologies. Okay. And like, for me, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. It helped me kind of seal like, close and things for you know if any of you know what this methodology is but it was interesting so it doesn't really matter the point is like study take classes that's how you meet actors that's how you collaborate yeah. you know that kind of thing yeah go 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 to those kind of but i oh, was yeah. gonna say also like oh you, you just because well with the training because it's like it's almost like being a, a, a marathon runner but you never know when the marathon's coming so you might get the call <laughs> the night before <laughs> totally then, we need you to run a marathon Exa tomorrow. It's <laughs> exactly true, dude. Be careful. <laughs> and I got when I got this this recent job. It's like be careful what you wish for, because right. you're like I want. Because you're you're you. Most <laughs> actors live in the world of want, yeah. And like I want that audition. Oh, I got the audition. Oh, God. Now I got to self tape it. Who's going to be my reader? Where am I going to film this right. thing? I, I want to get it right. I want to get, I I want to get the edit right. I want to get the light right. I want 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 want. And then right. will they see it? Will they like it? Will I get a call? If right. I'm on a veil, what does that mean? Is it between me and three other people? Then you get the job and you're like, oh, wait, I got to go do this thing. <laughs> yeah. I got to like, I, and I haven't worked on set in, a, in yeah. months and months and months. So I'm like, yeah. geez. So it, it's a funny one. It's a funny one because you better be ready to go, man. Like you better be ready to go because when they call you, you yeah. go. If you be careful and what if you, you wish blow for, it. Yeah, like I love the $200,000 shot thing you were talking about because. Yeah. <laughs> If you don't get that right, you're you're that's gone. the marathon, and they're expecting you to complete it in under two hours. You know, yeah, it show is up a wild and be ready to life, run. man. Yeah, it's wild. It is a wild life, and it's it's you know I don't know you know PC. Oh, I don't recommend it. I'm like, yeah, I mean, life is short, man. Do what you want to do. It's fun. It's good work if you can get it. Um, but I think <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to be uh scared and freaked out and you know unsure uncertain. uncertain. 
and you know, you just, absolutely. It's normal. I don't Get know friends anybody. and communities. Listen, I keep I say this to all sorts. You know, uh, Brad Pitt is unhappy with his performance in the last movie. You know, Sir, mm -hmm. uh, whatever Tony Hopkins, Anthony Hopkins is mm, displeased somehow with you know so and so. Name name your most favorite big time actor, and they still regret that they didn't get the role or they didn't do as well as they wanted to in something. Right. Right. It, in other words, it never ends. Meryl Streep is not 100% satisfied with her career. Although anybody else would look at it and go, wow, you know, sure. I mean, it's all relative. <clears throat> you can look ahead and go, Oh my God, that person has everything. And someone could look at you and go, Hey, you have an agent and you live in LA. That's so cool. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, is yeah. It? I don't know. It's all relative, yeah, okay. man. Yeah. You've done a all movie, I can say again TV, to, that's, that's and I know, this this podcast is I don't know if it's you know I know it's geared towards actors and also aspiring actors people maybe want to get into mm -hmm. this and it's and even for actors that are established let's say or at least have representation and people know it's like I I can't I do think taking workshops is important and I think for actors who are newer to it don't take these I would say don't take these one-off workshops Hey, meet Sally, whoever from oh, blah, yeah. blah, yeah, casting. Yeah. It's 40. Yeah. Take a four no. weeker. If they offer my own manager said this to me and she's yeah. also in casting. Good advice, don't take yeah. those. Don't take those one offs, man. They're not going to remember you. <laughs> They're not. Yeah. And she does them. She's like, I kind of know. But do if if they offer a month of them, let's say every yeah. Friday, for four yeah. of them, that's even if it's on Zoom or something. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's not pay to play. They won't. They don't owe you a gig, but they will know you. Yeah. Their job is to know you. And and that's it that's a useful in because it can seem like how do i get into this business man? without knowing yeah. if i don't have family or you know it's like doing those workshops take studying with somebody at least just to if nothing else to just work stuff out like again you're never out of the woods you can always suck in a scene man <laughs> always like <laughs> yeah you're never you're, you know what i mean like no, so, meryl streep is like she she looks yeah. at something and goes i, I sucked yeah you know, so it's, it's just, like it he, happens to everybody listen to this podcast it's ongoing get yeah. some insight she, meryl you know. streep should be hearing should listen she to should. This podcast. <laughs> anyway. real quick i don't want to hold you too much longer but a couple more things is your 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 missus your partner uh that's kind of a new relationship in a sense it, new uh, to me. we've been together for five or six years okay um so probably, she, is yeah, she but, in the biz in the industry not at all no okay not does that help close. you think or yeah, is that... i i mean i think so <laughs> Yeah, I sometimes you ask yourself, well, gee, if, if my partner was like, yeah. girl, we're not married, but we have a child, and, and <laughs> if we're together. my partner was, but if she a was casting director you know, for Netflix, <laughs> that would be cool, right? Like maybe, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe that would be better. Line actually. producer, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. I mean, runner. I think about it. Obviously, that would be cool, maybe, but also, I like the separation simply yeah. because I, I it's agree. such a neuroses creating, like, yeah. yeah, like what's going on? Like, I don't want two. You don't need two of those people. Yeah. And and frankly, I have friends who uh, I have a friend who's an actor who's quite successful, not like famous, famous, but like yeah. works a lot. And his okay. wife is aspiring to be an actor. She was a dancer and right. it causes friction. Man, yeah. Because she gets She's jealous getting, of his yeah. work. I'm like, what? You yeah. can't have your partner jealous of your work. It's like <laughs> you want, you know, so that can that's one element of it beyond the jealousy. Maybe it's like too much. Who knows? I'm sure there are perks to it, too. So. For me, it's nice to have this separation. And I think becoming a dad at yeah, in my late 40s you. is crazy because it's like, oh my goodness, like this is a young person's game. And I had a fear, like I can't have a kid and be some actor. I'm trying to be some How's that big actor. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I've the had balance, my yeah. best, I've had like my best year in the last several years, maybe in terms of just getting work. Cause I do audiobook work and mm -hmm. I do a lot of dubbing work and I have TV work. I just did a commercial. So I had a bunch of different types of work this year, which I was really thankful for. I'm like, damn, okay. Like maybe this baby's giving me some luck because there's a lot of fear. Like, how can I, how can I do this? Because I don't have <laughs> baby's a real job. Dude. Do you rub the baby's like, belly before you go? I'm like, wanna... yeah, I'm like, do commercials, baby. I'm like, <laughs> baby, I no. really want, I want. <laughs> And I'm like, get is a my kid going to think I'm a loser if I'm working at UPS and I'm 60 and he's in high school? Like, I had all these right. trippy fears. Like, what oh, if I'm not? Yeah, I know this. You know, like, like, am I going to be what? Success, what yeah. And that's all be it. Like, it turns out your kids don't care what you do for a living. It's just like, just feed me, man, and make sure I don't die. Yeah. They, um, but uh, it, it's, it's, 
it's scary to be freelance um sure. in a way uh scary is not the right word it's just like okay more is on the line right now so yeah. i feel like it's some growing up which is good so i'm thankful for that that's that's great yeah. um tell me quickly the 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 I, I i wanted to ask you before the the not the well i get it out bleep, Don't bleep it's uh <laughs> uh the strikes the sag after oh, yeah. strikes what was that like yeah i saw you out, you were out there in the streets and stuff yeah so or, ordinarily i'd be like oh there's a strike so what like i'm not working how's that weird like yeah. i'm never i'm never working <laughs> right what so changed? like it's like actually you see the, a lot of actors going up they're like yeah they're like they're, they got a time off something, they're something to do they're, they're, they're like yeah to, yeah uh, they're going to tahiti for you know and people weeks. use that those strikes as like total networking it was actually kind of wild sure I it's not like a coal miner strike like these are actors like dancing in the street and there's like people like Music, having karaoke food, and, yeah and it was it was like a, yeah, yeah it was a very <laughs> actorly but it was important man and i tell you what it was it was necessary yeah and i was i was worked because i was working in the show it was shut down and i was yeah. like that's not cool and right. not auditioning and not having access to this stuff and yeah. i could do voice i do like like i said like a lot of english language dubbing stuff for netflix and that that didn't oh. slow down so i was able to do that it didn't right. affect it, the voiceover stuff um but it was it was necessary because these what's happening is the, these cable companies are disappearing and they're becoming streaming services and now they don't have to pay you residuals so you can like my buddy is one of the leads on suits and suits goes to netflix they make no money from that wow zero dude Jeez. <laughs> and they make and and this is they're the leads of the show so it's like yeah they so this 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 contract found company. a way to to yeah. monetize it and to get into really into for better deal for background way a good deal and the writer strike too for residuals and credit and all that sort of thing it was just very it was overdue and it was really necessary but it was kind of fun in a way to 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 support your union and it, get, it made me feel like okay like i'm a part of this community and we were supportive here yeah and, i noticed that actually um, we, we, we don't have the right in this in, in with actors equity um to to strike in uh -huh. the same way uh, i see we have a union but we're not able to strike like shut and, things down yeah, yeah 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 so it's kind of in solidarity and right. obviously a lot of brits a lot because there's a huge industry here and it's all running out of america for the most part or back and forth you know they're they're, they're conjoined twins right so a lot of um brits and americans uh, british who were working in the industry were out of work including myself um it was like yeah. a covid for actors just yeah totally. you know, it was like a lockdown just for actors but um, oh man it yeah was hard it was hard but you were out there you, you yeah man it. yeah it was my fun. nieces were in town we were like they're like what's the picket line i'm like shut up just grab it just yeah fight the power with you that's cool i dragged them down it was cool i really wished i was able to go down there and i wished i had had the podcast at the time because i could have gotten so many actors it, it was cool <laughs> you know it, it was yeah. funny and you see a lot like there's jack black and there's like just people hanging out it was really kind of wild yeah in terms of that <laughs> and also like this sense of solidarity you yeah. know, it's a very, you know, yes, you're on set and yes, you may get to work with an actor or two that day, but you, you work, it's very isolating work. Yeah. You know, yeah, unless you got to focus so and, to get yeah. to like deal with, you know, it's not a, a play where there's 20 people in the cast and you get to all hang out and drink. It's like, yes, if you're in a member of a cast, you have your people, but a lot of the work that I do guest star, co-star kind of world, it's you show up, you meet five people and you go like to yeah. be around a community of all these people who do this work, who are working, who are yeah. supporting each other. It level playing field of, too it was made you feel like no support, stars made you feel like a, a, yeah a part of something really important and, and yeah and true it, it it wasn't some 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 bs it was like it this stuff does need to change for everybody yeah. i mean yeah and because how do you monetize this stuff and, i'll and tell you what it, else happened yeah. too which was interesting yeah but what happened uh you you've you witnessed this as well but uh plenty of like the general public finally understood that Oh wait, there aren't just two kinds of actors: the super crazy rich celebrities, and then the dead right. broke losers who aren't <laughs> actors. Like, right. oh, there's a whole like industry that just people I think just go whoosh, of people who are just making a decent living but need to make this amount to get their health insurance. Yeah, mortgages I mean, to I, pay. like 
my my kid is working on my class insurance. job. I was last year. I was if I tell you what the money is, you're like, huh? How do you even live? <laughs> I mean, to make to cl- to cl- to <laughs> to to qualify for health insurance, SAG now it's twenty five grand, mm. right? And then to qualify for a pension credit, and you need ten credits to get a pension mm. at some wow. point. Wow, it's yeah. twenty grand. Now that doesn't seem like any money whatsoever, right? It's like twenty grand. That's poverty law. But if you think about how hard it is to make that much money, if you're not doing a TV commercial yeah. or you're on a show, now if you're on a show properly, like you're making minimum thirty grand a week, and yeah. you know, and if you're doing national commercial, you can make between ten and let's say forty grand, depending on whatever. But your jobbing actor, yeah, it's a grand He's a day, man. To get, yeah, a get, grand a day. And if do you do independent, independent shit that I do, stuff that I do, yeah, um, hundred bucks a day, man. 50 bucks a day it's, it's still union right and so i might do wow. five films in one year i might have a great year and do two guest stars right. for me that's a miracle after hundreds of auditions that's a lot of work Dude, that might be that might be 17 grand right okay that's what i was gonna say and then Keep making so a grand if I'm lucky, on a shoot yeah once a once a month yeah so to and I qualified the last couple of years so for me it was a huge huge win and other people go dude i don't envy you like how what's you know how uh I'm like, I don't, I mean, that's, that's, I'm proud of that, man. Like, and, and if you take that away uh, during COVID, like the healthcare and SAG, like there was two plans, plan two and plan, they got rid of plan two, which means you only had to earn, I think 17 grand. They got rid of it all together and just said, you got to make 25 and all these old people, people like legendary oh, actors got kicked off their insurance dude. It's yeah. diabolical stuff. So it, this, 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 this union fight was very, very important. And yeah. most actors are middle income people man like it's not yeah. you know yeah it, 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 yeah and so it, it not all a listers no, we're no, not all 90, out with a tin cup in our hand 99 percent aren't i mean yeah it, yeah, it, yeah. so it's um it was a real humbling thing like yeah that's yeah. what came out of this whole thing was i finally got a lot of people understanding oh i didn't even you know like what we do and stuff because yeah you know i used to hate People go, oh, what do you do? I'm an actor. And they go, ooh, yeah. I think that's a tough, that's a tough industry. They look at you like you're homeless. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're like, wait, they like, well, oh. I obviously don't know who you are. Right. So you never... obviously must have done nothing. Nothing. Right. Cause they think that if you've done something, we all know you. I'm we like, know you. No. Yeah. There's like a hundred stars. Yeah. Okay. And they're seen are you in anything. That's the 50, question. 95,000. So, you know, and of course, as an actor, you want that role. Oh, you're the dude from that thing. And occasionally someone's like, oh, I saw you in Agency of S.H.I.E.L.D. Or, oh, I saw you. Maybe, but not really. It's like you have to have a lot of luck and like have a very like something that uh, really, really, really stands out for people to really know you. But but yeah, dude, it's pretty hilarious. People. I work at this bar, right? And this guy comes in. He goes, "So you're an actor, huh?" I'm like, "Yeah." So what do you do? Like uh, reenactments and stuff? I'm like, "Reenactments." <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, you know, like you know Civil those crime War shows, yeah, oh. those, where they got oh, the no, reenactment." No. I'm like, "No, bro. I'm on. I do shows. Like I do." <laughs> they go, "You do?" They t- yeah. they can't even believe right that you that would possibly to, work because yeah. they're like, "You're either like you said, like yeah, you're either just." Someone who will a never ever work. party entertainer or right or or like Brad Pitt Clooney or, yeah <laughs> and I'm like no man there's a whole lot of people who do this work who might not be a household name and you know Funny. it's it is a crazy way to do it I must say but. are you happy yeah man I am happy you know it's I I I've struggled with that sometimes like I you know just a, accepting happiness and being like like my friend said this and I don't know if this is useful to your crowd he's like. Hey Babs, like I hate to break it to you, but this is it. Like you, there's no, the, you're. This is the work. Like there's no Shangri La. There's no like, you're not going to get to the summit of this mountain and be like, I've arrived. This is it. Right. You are literally doing it. If you're if you're able to audition, if you're able to maybe work, if you're able to get headshot, just keep the whole thing moving. You're doing it. This is the career. Yeah. This you're doing it. And so if you don't enjoy this, this right. journey then yeah. dude I've never get it. off the mountain because it, yeah. it's not because there's always going to be another door you want to bust down always yeah and, and i know it sounds sort of simplistic but for me it helped kind of go you know what i am this is it like i say this to myself all the time i'm like this is it like you're doing it like yeah. you're having an acting career like and, and so find peace with that do other things to make you happy and make money side money 
but like if you still enjoy it do it man and and don't and this might be all it ever is and are and that's okay too right. you know like if you're happy it's like but it'll and, never it, be like i like that because it'll never be complete you can win i mean there's there's actors out there that you think that ah, they must be completely satisfied mark ruffalo or i don't know brian cranston or i don't know who haven't nope and they want to earn an academy they want to win an academy award well, of course yeah, then they, you want the, then you want then you want two right then and then, want two, it, it, and then want or if you have that great role are you like am i never going to get another great role yeah like what like it doesn't just end if artists if i dare say actors are you know or an artistic lifestyle or whatever you want to call it um you're never retired you know i work around musicians yeah, they don't that's retire great. that's great yeah you just you just work time. you work you you just you just work man now if you're over it and you're truly miserable then get out of it and be yeah. happy who cares yeah. no one keeps yeah. no one's keeping score and no one cares yeah. dude yeah like just follow your bliss and 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 find podcasts teachers ways things to listen to perspective on maybe how to break into it or maybe how to sustain it um because the work is its own thing i mean what we're talking about is a lot of the business stuff the work itself needs to be sort of protected or i don't know, sound lofty about it but you need to work on that and and remain clear and confident to do that sensitive work that is what this is, you know, because it's all so mechanical on a set and you got to like that blah, blah is like your world. You have to really protect yourself to make sure that that's good. Cause if you're too wrapped up in the business side of things, you're going to suck as an actor. You're going to be too stressed out and neurotic and weird. Like you have to remember that you're there to tell a story, you know? Mm. <laughs> yeah embrace the work yeah okay. i got a special treat i got a special treat for you before we let you go oh are you ready uh yeah oh wait what do i gotta do i want to do okay i gotta do for, for the youtube viewers now you probably haven't seen this for a while oh no oh, <laughs> oh my gosh that, that is, a, is riot. a riot you remember that one oh, oh, so, so did you see the match last night i played I the played weirdo the weirdo. The <laughs> <laughs> look at you, you, you handsome, handsome dog, dog you. you look how young we look oh well uh, oh my god well the weather is much better now than it was you live you like spend a lot of time in the elevator Yes, that's, that's right. right. And I was near Actually, the awkward. The temperature is three degrees higher this season than what's been the average over, over the last ten years. The director's name was. Uh... That's all. Oh, he had Tor? a he had an Icelandic guy. Tor. Tor yes. Well, uh, uh, it was nice meeting you. Got it. It just slipped out of my head. I had it. Yes. That's right. Play the that's super, super creep. creep. Ba Babson playing his perfect creepy self. Oh, look, oh, at, my look at my bald, bald little, little young face. face. Yeah, you had no hair Dude, even back then. I know. That's that. I was. That was. That was. That was another. Oh, I'm getting oh, I'm crazy. Getting, I go. Um, um. But uh. But, uh it, uh it's gone now. Getting um. Yeah, going bald at 21 is quite something. Uh, because you're thrust into this like. You know old man roles but look at me i was boyish but i was only 27 years old or you something realize like in this film you were you were this guy i want to explain it to the podcast oh, yeah. if you're not watching it so he was like this awkward guy lived in the building and um it was a student film for these uh this icelandic kid it was mork it wasn't mork it was torsten or mork. <laughs> <laughs> More. Come on. he'll hate the fact that i don't i can look it up it's i think it's on imdb uh and and you realize like oh i can make small talk in the elevator and people will be nice to me and stuff so you started like decorating the elevator oh and like God, living in it and then having food and and then i came in i was like the kind of cool business guy or whatever yeah. um and uh i think this is the second and there's a couple scenes with us together oh my oh, goodness um, and uh and then I, I'd walk into the elevator with my girlfriend. Oh, this guy, yeah. And you had it decorated, posters up. You can watch it on YouTube. Dolphin poster. So what do you think? It's me going, I don't know what. This is crazy. This, this, it really uh... brightens the place up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
What a nut well, job. The weather's still really good, though. A oh, weather small talk. From Africa. Is that so? Yeah, Sharon, you know the weather girl? Said so last night. She really knows what she's talking about. Oh, well, there's my floor. I gotta go. Creeper! Creeper. <laughs> Say hi to your girlfriend, Nina. Oh, and then the fact that you knew who Nina was. I'm like, what? Uh, that's the old right? copy. Oh, I got yeah, it's yeah, all yeah, fuzzy. Dude, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta send that to me. That is, that is, <laughs> that is that too, too, uh, too good. Too good. Too good. You're, oh my god, I remember your reaction. Your reaction, your reaction <laughs> of like, of like, of having, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, of, of having no, no, like no response was the funniest thing I remember laughing <laughs> hysterically when I saw it. You're like, uh, bro, it was fun. Um, why are you in the elevator? That was like some innocent stuff and just practicing you know again like i hadn't done you know these are new you know learning how to act on camera or doing these little shorts and you know especially getting you know yeah. for me like playing a weird character was fun like because rather than just playing the earnest straight guy it's like oh i can play it's this weirdo who lives in an elevator and and you were oh my god like oh, you were uh hilarious dude that was so funny Holy alish smokes. Alish Smith. Oh, good memory. Yeah, I would know. No, I have memory. I looked it up on. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Dude, that's a fun. I, I, I need hysterical. To look props, how young so. we. Look how young we were. Holy I smoke. know. I have to. Um, I'll send it to you. Uh, and we did a lot of stuff. We did a lot of stuff. We had a. Uh, it was. It was. We did a play. With... Directed you in a play, man. Remember? You directed me. Yeah. Work, Remember work, the work. David I was that was that it? Yeah, the David Ives. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, American evening. Were, we did a whole evening. You were great. Of plays. Thank you. That was fun. That was the only time I really directed. So I was like, you guys trusted me, and that was really surreal. I was like, I can't believe. Okay, this is fun. Like, <laughs> again, like getting people to 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 trust in you and, and to play around. It was fun, man. Those are fun years. I mean, yeah. we kind of no one had a TV. Either. No one had. Right. I mean, we weren't. We were living like in the dark ages, man. Like we didn't. We I was no, thinking internet was. And, yeah. No, you had to go to an internet cafe. It was, but that creativity, doing shorts, doing plays, like everybody whatever, was up to do anything. Yeah. Anything. It was like super. And because there was no agents in the crowd, there was no industry beyond yeah. what we were doing. So there's no one to impress. Right. So you just uh, did just it. Our friends. Yeah. Yeah. Just for fun. And here, everything is like everyone's trying to angle to get someone to see them. It's like, yeah, it's a shame it's, in a way. It's it like, is, yeah. I don't like that emphasis on business. It's like, why not just make some weird little movies and have fun and no one's ever going to see it. I mean, Grab like camera. Yeah. Yeah. We did, stupid you know, and... with, uh, Scott, we did, we filmed all of Sam Shepard's true West and oh, Scott's yeah. apartment for the hell That's of it, dude, yeah. for the hell yeah. of it. We yeah. filmed the whole play and edited. I might even have that somewhere. I might even have that. just for fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just for fun. And I, and it's not half bad, believe. I mean, it's, it's, you know, Oh, I saw it. I watched it. It's it's, you know, it's a little wonky, but it was like it's also kind of okay. I was like, this is fun, man, just for the love of the game, like, yeah. and just to be. I miss, I do miss those days, and in in a in a way, I want to, I don't know, recapture some of that and, and it, it, that that sense of play and that sense of fun, and it doesn't have to be this intense money driven. Like, oh no, how do I get people to hire me and love me? It's like, no, make cool stuff, man. Yeah. Make cool stuff, and your audience will find you. And that's why I hope that people, uh, audiences, uh, aspiring actors everywhere will recognize that you don't have to be in New York, L.A., London, some not at market. all. Find some friends, especially now with self taping, and yeah, you can yeah, be everybody's got anywhere. a camera in their pocket. Yeah, you yeah. can be anywhere, and you, you can, can put it up on YouTube. Anywhere. You can actually, you can share it. You know, we didn't have that back in the day either. No, uh, you can bypass the, the whole entire. Yeah, thing i mean industry. look at look at the look at youtube stars and tiktok stars they've bypassed everything yeah they can you and can actually just yeah. create your own channel make your own work just do the work and don't yes there's la and london and things like this and and that's great if you can crack it and get find a way into it but it's so random don't be it's sucked like, into there yeah no make your own work make creative work uh, uh make or be creative whether it's good or bad i mean just keep keep working I don't think that should ever lose. You can't really lose that, you know. Stay creative, keep working, and you'll never lose. Yeah. Never lose, bro. Well, you certainly are a winner. <laughs> I really love you, man. I appreciate you. Love coming. you too, pal. This is a blast, and, and I appreciate you. Yeah. Indulging. It's fun. To, it's kind of strange and 
weird to talk about yourself, but it's also fun to share our shared experiences and yeah. to kind of look back and go, okay, hey, like there's some stuff there and it's 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 a fun journey and, and it's it's yours, you know, and no one can take it away from you. It's like you, it's, as you know, it's like you never know where life's going to lead you. And it's like, it's fun to kind of look back and, 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 and summarize some of the stuff. It's kind of wild. Yeah. Yeah. So and I appreciate fact, you I, inviting me to do it. Hey man, I was really looking forward to this one, to be honest, because it's our journeys kind of overlapped and, and still do to some extent. And yeah, um, you know, I always appreciated your, your love of the game. Uh, and the, yeah, the, man. The, well, we, we were soldier. We were in the trenches. We were like on set together a lot and working together a lot. And like, it was such yeah. a small town. Like I was doing these North American pick the, those goofy B movies with, <laughs> I was in a scene with <laughs> the, the town is so small that I was in a scene in a movie with my roommates. Right. <laughs> I mean, how small <laughs> of a town, how small of a town can you get? Yeah. I mean, right. there were literally in the scene with me. I mean, it was hysterical. I mean, we were just always lash of the scorpion. Oh God. Yeah. Was it called lash of the or scorpion? Kiss, lash of oh. the scorpion or kiss, kiss of, the of the whip or. I remember yeah, there were awful movies, like, dude, man. Todd, this is like, it's, it's, it's just soft. This is porn, bad. Really. Yeah. And all your scenes were not the soft core porn stuff, but you were the in-between scenes. Yeah. And then they would go down to the, then my they'd manager, cut to the dungeon. Who I mean, he's like, he's like, is there a reason why you're doing porn in Prague? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not doing porn, dude. I played the warden of a movie called like a female kiss prison. of the whip or whatever. And then they changed the title to like lesbian <laughs> yeah. fantasy five or something. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well I can't <laughs> control it. It was awful, man. Oh, but yeah, God, I'm so but glad we, that came up. But all those B movies, all that stupid stuff, it was like a hilarious, fun experience. It's yeah, it's ridiculous, dude. No, you couldn't. You we couldn't lived in a special time. I think, um, yeah, being did. able to be expats in a in a city like Prague and working as actors, to, yeah, do our craft. Crazy. Yeah, it was crazy, and you can't really. I mean, it's still a scene there. There's still stuff happening. Um, uh, Maya oh, know, actually yeah. just sent me uh, a trailer for something she's working on about actors in Prague, and it's really funny. So I mean, okay. it, there, there's 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 still like a a world there, but you know, in terms of us being kind of under the table, you know, working under the table, I I had like people paying me in bags of cash. I did like a yeah. Luther this thing with Joseph <laughs> Fines, the scene with Joseph Fines. Oh yeah, and I'm like, dude, what's up? And it was just so surreal. And then afterwards, literally, a man pulled up in a cart with a bag of money and goes, thanks. <laughs> Like a bag of money. <laughs> There's no contracts, no union, yeah. no. I mean, it was just insane. Oh, I was so like, great. what the hell? I wasn't even legal to work there. I mean, it was ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, and so it was a really kind of a wild time to learn about film acting and this yeah. beautiful filmmaking. Movie. Yeah, filmmaking. Film and if you acting. want to know more, check out a film called Rex Patriots. Rex <laughs> Patriots. Another one we did. Oh, and James, God. James kind of had the lead in that. And I play a Oh, there's so many dude. stories. We might have to come back and have another conversation. Part two. Yeah. Um, but dude, thanks so much. Um, and I'm really psyched for you. And I think it's a really uh hey, Thank you. let's give it up for Todd, everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, for me, no, for James, James Babson. <laughs> what James. a great resource, man. What a great resource for actors and, and talking to people and just getting yeah. perspective, you know. There's no yeah. right or wrong way to do a lot of this stuff in a way. It's like just as long as you're just making just doing it, you know. That's what it, that's the deal. I just want to give everybody some insight. So hopefully everybody's gotten a little something something out of this. Uh, I know I did. Uh, James is kind of a, a salty, an old salt when it comes to the, the acting game. Um, and again, appreciate you very much, buddy. We'll yeah, talk soon. I'll see you out Love with some it. of the theme. You get 25 seconds. That's my funky offstage acting theme music. Uh, what do you think of that song? You like that? It's very groovy, dude. You remember Car Wash? Kawa. Yeah, that's it. It's kind of, I love the fun. I won't okay. sing it. I don't want to get any copyright infringement. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. All right. That's Offstage Acting you, Podcast. Bro. Our special guest, James Babson. We'll see you soon, buddy. Thanks all. Later, brother. Cheers. Later. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. I mean, I just love all those stories because you don't know. You just don't know how movies get made, how actors get jobs, what happens off stage. Uh, and there's a few anecdotes there that he told and I told and uh, I could I could listen to that all day. It's just hysterical and fun and uh, interesting, especially if you're an aspiring actor or if you're a working actor. I'm sure you can relate 
to quite a few of those stories. Um, well, there it is, James Babson. I really appreciate you guys checking in again with us. And no, děkuji mi vám moc pěkně. Uvidíme se příště vidět. Následanou.